Now, if you recently watched my channel, you know I reviewed the IdeaPad or in other parts of the world known as the Yoga Slim 7. It had a Ryzen 7 processor, very sleek, modern design, all metal design, very premium, good price, uh, one of the best out there as far as the 14 inch laptops are concerned here for 2020. But I wanted to check out something with a bigger display, with a 15.6 inch display. I wanted a dedicated GPU, but I wanted to, it to be thin, light, like the Slim line has been producing. So I ordered the IdeaPad Slim 7 15. It has a GTX 1650 GPU. It has a six core 10th generation processor from Intel. It's the Core i7-10750H. It all comes in in a very sleek, portable package at only 4.3 pounds or 1.95 kilograms. Yeah, that's not something we see every day. Dedicated GPU with a powerful processor in a very small, thin and light package. And that's what we have here. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7 GTX 15. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. And make sure you follow me on my social media. I post a lot of updates on those platforms. And why not check out our Discord server? It's a great place for us to hang out and talk tech. Link will be in the video description below. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. Want to become a member? Hit that join button below. And in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before its release. This unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Lenovo. Pricing for the GTX unit, which I have here today, starts at $1,219.99 US. The review unit that I'm reviewing today, of course, comes in at $1,369.99. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy it. Now, inside the United States, it's called the IdeaPad Slim 7 GTX 15. Outside the United States, it goes under the Yoga moniker. I know it's confusing, but it's all the same. They're the same laptop. Just keep that in mind. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Inside the box is a 135 watt power supply that uses Lenovo's own proprietary connector. They also give you the extension cord. You get your warranty, safety information, and a setup guide. Now, right off the bat, you're looking at a very sleek, all aluminum premium design, very impressive. At 4.3 pounds or 1.95 kilograms, definitely portable, enough to take with you on the go. I like that portability. And I love the minimal branding. All you get is a Lenovo tag on the lid, as you see here, and the 7 Series etched into the reverse notch. That's it, sleek and minimal. That's the way I like it. And as we always do, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side where you get your USB-A port, an HDMI port, a Thunderbolt 3 port, which I like to see, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader. I like that. Two more USB-A ports, and finally your power button. The only port I would say is missing is an RJ45 Ethernet port. Other than that, again, good port selection. Now, Lenovo makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is remove the seven T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice the dual fans for cooling. We'll get into thermals later on in this video. You'll also notice that it has a 70 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life later on as well. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user replaceable, although the one they give you gives you some excellent reads and writes, as you can see from these results. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. That's kind of a negative in my book, of course. And then finally, the Wi-Fi card is socketed in. That means you can swap it out as well. It's Wi-Fi 6, which makes it more future-proof, which I like to see. And it's also a Bluetooth 5 combo, all working well on that front. 
Okay, let's talk about that display. What we're looking at is a 15.6 inch IPS non-touch display, and it's really nice. Well, we're looking at 330 nits in terms of brightness, good for both indoor and outdoor use. Now it is a glossy display, not too bad in terms of the reflections of the glare, so it's good in that regard. Uh, good white points, good black points, good contrast, good viewing angles, and decent Delta E score. So that means you're gonna get some pretty decent color accuracy, and it covers the color gamut very well. 100% sRGB, 77% percent adobe rgb 78 percent of the p3 wide color gamut 72 percent ntsc making this a very good choice for those content creators that like to do lightroom photoshop and of course video editing the other good news is i didn't detect any pwm so for those that are sensitive to it this is a good choice you won't have that problem you're also looking at very slim side bezels, a slim top bezel, and a minimal chin on the bottom. Sleek, modern look, exactly what we like to see in 2020. Now, speaking of that top bezel, it has a reverse notch. Couple of things, it does house the webcam. We'll get into that in a moment. And it also gives you a little latch to lift up this lid with one finger. Again, double functionality there, I like it. Now, speaking of that webcam, let's check it out. So this is the front-facing camera on the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7 15 here for 2020. And it has an infrared camera. That means you can log in with Windows Hello, 720p, 30 frames per second. Good for Zoom, good for Skype. I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, I like it. It has those familiar smile-shaped keys that we've come to know and love with Lenovo. Very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. And it has pretty decent tactile feedback along with decent key travel. Now, it also has a multi-stage backlight. That, of course, allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. I like this keyboard. Now, since this is a 15.6-inch device, they also include a numeric keypad on the keyboard and that allows you to do some spreadsheets and so forth so for those number crunches out there you definitely will appreciate that numeric keypad and they also love the fact that this is a spill resistant keyboard now, as far as the touchpad is concerned, it's a precision touchpad. It's a glass touchpad. It has a decent size to it. Two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth. All the Windows 10 gestures are working as advertised. Great job on that touchpad. I like it. Now, when it comes to the audio, there are three two-watt speakers on this laptop, one on the speaker grill on the top there you see here, and then two on the bottom, as you see here, producing some pretty decent sound. I was actually a little bit surprised on how good the sound is. Uh, nice, pleasant surprise for sure. Decent mids, good bass, fills up the room rather nicely. Let's give it a listen. Okay, let's talk about the performance. We're looking at an Intel Core i7 10750H, a six core 10th gen processor from Intel. Decent PC Mark 10 score. That means you're going to be able to do everyday tasks pretty well. That's a good indicator of that. Uh, definitely can do video editing on this. De definitely 1080p. You can do some 4K video editing thanks to that GTX 1650 GPU that it does have. Now, when it comes to gaming, this is not a dedicated gaming laptop, but you can definitely play 1080p on high settings. And and you get some playable frame rates on things like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, and the Rise of the Tomb Raider. All had decent, although the Rise of the Tomb Raider, you may want to bump it down a little bit to get more playable frame rates. But overall, it's a definitely capable of gaming on this laptop. Now, of course, there is a Thunderbolt 3 port. If you want to add an external GPU for even more power, you have that option, although it will add to the cost of this laptop. Now, as far as the base temperature, when you put the uh, CPU under 100% load, first 10 seconds, 3.44 gigahertz at 95 degrees Celsius in terms of the CPU core temperature, 15 to 30 seconds, it would go down to 3.22 gigahertz, again, 95 degrees Celsius to maintain that temperature. And then finally, the first 10 to 15 minutes, 2.87 gigahertz, and you're looking at 95 degrees Celsius, again, at 100% load, maintain 95 degrees Celsius. Now, when you're doing real life gaming, these are the results. You will notice it throttle down to maintain a lower core temperature. Here you're seeing about 65 to 66 degrees Celsius. Now, as far as surface temperatures are concerned, they maintain pretty decent temperatures, although it got a little bit hot by the keyboard, as you see here. 
Now, you'll notice that there are two fans in terms of the cooling, and they will kick in under heavy load like any thin and light laptop like we have here, although they're not very noisy, so it's not too much of a distraction, and that's been pretty good so far. I like the fact that the fans don't get too loud. And when it comes to battery life, that's where this laptop really shines. It did 12 hours and 34 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. It has a 70 watt hour battery, and that was actually been pretty good. All day battery life, beating out a lot of the competition in this category. Now they do supply you with 135 watt power adapter, but you could also charge via the Thunderbolt 3 port that this does have via USB-C. So that is another option when it comes to charging, and it takes takes less than two hours to give you a full charge with the included power supply. That's been pretty good. Okay, to bring it all home, can I recommend the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7 15 inch here for 2020? And the answer is absolutely. This has been a pleasant surprise flying under the radar, a really great laptop. I like its thin and light all metal design. I like the great battery life, the sharp, bright display that you get with this. Very good performance for a notebook of this size. Thunderbolt 3 port, SD card reader, full size SD card reader, all there. Backlit, spill resistant keyboard, Wi-Fi 6, optional IR camera for face recognition for Windows Hello login. Negatives, RAM is not user upgradable, and there's no RJ45 connectivity. Those are not deal breakers by any stretch, ladies and gentlemen. I liked it so much, I'm gonna give this a score of 95%, making the Slim 715 definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Slim 7? Well, it could be the IdeaPad Slim 7 if you're in the US, Yoga Slim 7 15 if you're outside the US. Now, what I like is it's 15.6 inch IPS display, very good, 330 nits, very good coverage of the color gamut, good color accuracy, good contrast, good viewing angles. It really checked all the boxes. Not too bad in terms of glare or reflections, even though it is a glossy display, good in that regard. I like its battery life with that 12 and a half plus hours that you're gonna get with this. Again, all day battery life is definitely something we like to see. Good performance out of that Core i7-10750H, a six core processor, 45 watt TDP processor, and it all performed pretty well. Uh, on this laptop. Now, you don't normally see that kind of power on a thin and light laptop, 4.3 pounds or 1.95 kilograms, portable and powerful. That's the theme with this laptop. Sort of flying under the radar, I think AMD's got a lot of um, publicity, a lot of hype lately with their Ryzen processors, but this one, don't overlook it because it comes in at a good price to performance value, good performance. As you saw, you can definitely game with this. It's certainly capable for giving you playable frame rates thanks to that 1650 GPU. You could also do productivity work, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It all worked well. So it really checks all the boxes. Boxes, and that's why I gave it such a high score, because it did really come through. Price, performance, battery life, screen, it all came through. With its three two-watt speakers, it all filled up the room rather nicely. Again, not something we see. So it really is a great all-around laptop. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. You're gonna get this at a little over $1,300, and considering you can do video editing on this, you can do productivity work, you can even game on this, this is definitely a great price to performance ratio. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.